Hello everybody, Beamer always here. Hope you're all doing well. Today I'm doing something a little bit different. I have selected the top 10 most obscure albums in my collection. So these very unknown albums that I really, really like. And, you know, it's a bit difficult to decide what constitutes an obscure album. So I took two parameters. The number of people they say they have the album in Discogs.com and the monthly listeners in Spotify. To give you a benchmark, I took the album Peace of Mind by Iron Maiden. And this album has... 54,000 people who say they have it on Discogs.com and Iron Maiden have 5,780,000 monthly listeners in Spotify. So without further ado, let's get started. The first album I want to talk about is Avalanche. Here comes the king from 1994. This is not in Spotify at all and has only... 25 people in discogs.com. This album is an absolute jewel lost in the world of metal. It may be my favorite album on this list and the most obscure. It was a 1994 independent release. They were a quintet from Germany doing power speed metal very similar to Halloween. At the time, they Fill the void between the Keepers and Master of the Rings for me. And while not really original, the songwriting captivated me and the songs are very catchy. The vocal is an apologetic, soaring, high-pitched vocal, so really in the lines of Michael Kisk from Halloween. The album is front-loaded and a bit too long, but... You know, the first half is absolutely brilliant. They are in the metal archives and the album can be found on YouTube. I actually don't know how I found them or how I ordered the CD, but I'm glad I did. So this is one for really for the fans of Halloween. Next on my list is Jekyll, A Safe Look in Mirrors, also from 1994 and 89 people have it in discogs.com. Jaco was a four-piece power metal band from Denmark who enjoyed some success in Europe and Japan. A Safe Look in Mirrors and their 1993 album Vague Visions. I remember ordering from Japan actually, so I have two, two of them as Japanese uh, versions. It cost me, like, let's say, a fortune at a time. And A, Fa a Safe Look in Mirrors is their third album and my favorite. Even if their best song is There by the Trees from Vague Visions, which is their second album. I remember those albums filling the void left by Maiden without Bruce and Adrian. Instrumentally, they are more like Primal Fear, but the vocals are very similar to Bruce Dickinson's. They put a touch of progressiveness into their power metal with a bit longer song and mid-tempo passages. If I, if I must say, it's the closest you get from Maiden how they sounded in Fear of the Dark, I would say. Unfortunately, vocalist Brian Rich passed away in 2013 and was replaced in 1996 and but soon after the band was dissolved. They are also in Metal Archives, so you can check them there, and the album can also be found on YouTube. And this is really for the fans of Maiden and Primal Fear. Next on the list is Time Machine Act 2 Galileo from 1995. This one, 120 people say they have it in Discogs.com. Time Machine was a prog rock metal band from Italy and Act 2 Galileo was their first full-length album. Don't ask me why it's named Act 2. They were a five-piece with a bass player also doing the keyboards. 
It's an ambitious concept album full of instrumentals, samples, even a song with saxophone. They have some beautiful melodies and arrangements. It's a very cool mid-tempo prog album with a bit of uh, atmospheric moments. Singer Falco Orlandini sounds a bit like Andre Matos from Angra, but he didn't exaggerate on his high-pitched screams, it was a bit more contained. He did a great job in this album, but unfortunately he left the band before their second album, which I didn't like. You can stream on YouTube, they are not on Spotify, and this is really for the fans of Dream Theater and Angra. Next on the list is Ivanhoe, Symbols of Time from 1995. This one has 170 people saying they have it on Discogs.com. And this one is also on Spotify with 510 monthly listeners. Ivanhoe is one of the few still active bands on this list. They actually released an album in 2020. So I debated if they are really that obscure. Also, they can be found on Spotify, albeit a very small number of followers. This album is a bit buried in their page, though. I must admit, it's not a perfect album, but it has some awesome moments. The opening title track is fantastic and is what led me to know the band in the first place. I also own the album prior and the one after that one, which is called Symbols of Time. The singer back then was Andy B. Frank, who is still very active with the band Brainstorm. But here they are making a more progressive metal and not the power metal sound of Brainstorm. Frank in Ivanhoe uses less drive in his vocals and more frequently uses high notes than what he does in Brainstorm. The performance of Frank on By a Feeling is stunning. This is an album for the fans of Dream Theater and Fate's Warning. Let's move on to the next on the list, that's Superior, the name of the album is Behind from 1996 and 202 people say they have it on Discogs.com. Now Superior was a prog metal band from Germany formed in 1988 and releasing this full-length album and debuted only in 1996. They were a six-piece with two guitars and keyboards. This album has some amazing songs, especially the first three. Why, in particular, is my favorite. It's a nine-minute masterpiece with an amazing build-up. You know it's good when the longest song comes as track number two on the album. The vocalist delivers a fantastic performance and Superior sounds something like the less complex songs from early Dream Theater. They released a couple of albums more and split up at the end of 2007. They are in the metal archives as well and the album can be found on YouTube. And this is really for the fans of Dream Theater. We keep going with Hollow and the album being Modern Cathedral for 1998. This one can be found on Discog.com with 224 people saying they have it. And it's also on Spotify with 96 monthly listeners. Hollow were a progressive power metal band from Sweden, active from 95 to 98, releasing two albums and since 2018 became a solo project by Andreas Stoltz, who does the vocals and guitars. The debut Modern Cathedral featured three other band members and it's more power traditional metal than progressive. It features 12 songs in 45 minutes and despite the last few songs getting a bit boring, the first two thirds of the album are great. It's just straightforward metal with incredible hooks. This one I would say is for the fans of Crimson Glory and Angel Dust. 
All right, so next one is our tension into the eye of the storm from 1996. Our tension has 262 people in the skog.com that says they have this album. And it's also on Spotify with 584 monthly listeners. This is a simply magnificent album. I cannot put another way. Our Tension is a North American neoclassical progressive metal band found in 1993 by keyboardist Vitali Kupri. The band split up after recording seven albums from 96 to 2004. I have some of them, I think, but definitely not all of them. And they are really good, but... Their debut is still my favorite. The musicianship is superb, but they don't overdo in the instrumental parts. In addition, the band has also a good mix of melody and aggressiveness. John West is an amazing underrated singer, and this album also features Mike Tarana on the drums. It's a prog metal class. You gotta check this out if you like prog metal. So I would say this is definitely for the uh, Dream Theater fans. We shift gears to something very different from everything we have so far on this list. And this is uh, the band Below with the album Across the Dark River. And a very recent one, relatively speaking, 2014. This band had these... Album has 404 people that say do they have it in discogs.com and they have 436 monthly listeners on Spotify. As I said, this is something different because also the genre here is epic doom metal that we haven't had in this list yet. And below is a band from Sweden. The medium length and well written songs with the soaring clean vocals doomy riffs and a love from Candlemas is what you will find in this album. While not really original, this band knows how to deliver epic doom. This is their first LP and the second one, Upon a Pale Horse, is a bit better but also got much more attention due to the uh, Metal Blades promotion. For this list purpose, I chose the debut because it's much more obscure, but almost equally good. Goes without saying that this is for the fans of Candlemas. All right, we're getting to the last two ones. And the second to last is Scanner with the Ball of the Damned album from 1997. 491 people say they have it on Discogs.com and the band has 2,289 followers on Spotify. Well, Skunner is a German power metal band and Ball of the Dam is their fourth full-length album. I may have another album from them somewhere, but this one was the first I bought. The album highlight is actually... Primal Fear singer Half Skippers doing the guest vocals on Puppet on a String, the album opener. So it's very confusing when the opening track is fully sang by a guest, but anyways, in any case, the songs that follow are also very good. The longest, more progressive songs being the best ones. Gamma Ray fans will really like this, and also the more aggressive side of it, I think Vicious Rumors fans could also dig this band let's go to the very last one on this list lethal with programmed from 1990 this can be found on discogs.com with 928 people and in spotify they have 1762 followers so it's one of the most popular bands on this list relatively speaking, and this is their first album of two. They are an American heavy metal band, and this is a fantastic metal album in the lines of early Queensryche, and relatively known in the underground power metal scene. 
despite being with Metal Blade, I have no idea why they didn't get more exposure. This is the last hidden jewel on this list and for some the strongest and best album on this list. As with all these 10 albums, better late than never, so check it out. This is really for the fans of Reich and Crimson Glory. Alright, this was a very interesting list for me to do. I may repeat with a second edition with some additional ones and I will leave here two honorable mentions. One being a Brazilian band that sings in Portuguese with uh, influence from local music from the Northeast and it's Raimundos with their debut album and the other one is Power Metal from Chromium Rose and the album being Louis Ford. So that's it. Thanks for listening. Please like, share, subscribe, and be mad always.